I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our May 2021 virtual graduation. My name is Kathy Chirangi, Head of Student Leadership Development here at Columbia International College. I'm so delighted to be your host. Graduates, today is a celebration of your accomplishments. As a class, you have overcome so many obstacles to get to this proud moment. 2020 and 2021 thus far have been challenging, but you have all shown great character throughout this pandemic. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. These challenges of the last 18 months or so will serve you well. It is an extremely proud moment for all of us staff, parents, and friends as we watch you graduate and bring this chapter of your life to a close. We had hoped it could have been in person, but alas, it is not yet possible. We welcome our graduate, Jeff Wong, to play O Canada. We are about to begin the presentation of diplomas and the speeches to celebrate you, our graduates. It will look a little different than an in-person graduation. The screen will be split. On the left side of the screen, you will see the speakers, and on the right, you will see the graduate slides with their acceptances and honors. We begin with our principal's address. Mr. Bill Ironside is a career Ontario teacher and has been leading Canadian schools here in Ontario and around the world for more than 12 years. He believes in inclusive schools that teach character as integral to the classroom learning. Mr. Ironside takes great pride in the Ontario classroom and the professionalism and dedication of our faculty and staff to the active role students take in directing their own learning. He believes that an Ontario Secondary School Diploma positions our graduates for success as they go on to pursue higher education. This year's grads have shown perseverance, determination, and academic excellence in the face of the COVID-19 crisis. Mr. Ironside is extremely proud of this graduating cohort. Welcome to our graduation, Mr. Chan. To our valedictorian, Ashbel, and to our vote of thanks, Rebecca. To our parents, staff, and to our impressive graduating class, you are an extraordinary group of young women and men, and we are so proud to be honoring you today. Let's begin. Albeit virtual, our celebration here confirms an important fact, and that is no one graduates alone. Think about that. Even in this time of social distancing with virtually everything remote, indeed, our goal today is to come together to celebrate just as we learn together. A graduate is part of a community, a family, friends, and school staff. And over this past semester, I witnessed this community daily when I visited our virtual classes, our clubs, our many character celebrations, our recent Model United Nations Conference, and in residence too, at our proms and the Community Day celebration. And I very much believe that community is more relevant than ever. It sustains us at an unprecedented time in our history. So let's talk a little bit about this time in history. Will you, the class of 2021, take the opportunity to not just piece back 
the same old tired and failed jigsaw puzzle of the 21st century, but take us to a new, a better, and a just world. Picture for just a moment here a world where empathy is not just a word, but it really means something. Let's be honest. We need a world that is more caring and kind, a world that is more respectful and responsible and inclusive towards others and to our environment too. This pandemic has not only taken and devastated lives and communities around our world, it has also highlighted ugly inequalities and injustices that just shouldn't be. As you ready yourself to launch into university and college, think now about using your privilege and your gifts to make the difference. Whether you land in engineering, medicine, business, the arts, or somewhere in between, do this with purpose. Take your character and for goodness sake, work with like-minded people from other disciplines to inform policy. If and only if you value community and let your character lead you, regardless of your future field of endeavor, you can and you will be impactful and design a more healthy and just society. I believe the time has never been better for young people like yourself to bring about meaningful and needed change. And before I close today, a heartfelt thank you. Let's not forget that right here at CIC, there are many on the front lines who, while looking after their own health and wellness, are making sure that we are safe, learning and cared for. We need to be thankful to our house parents, our housekeeping and maintenance staff, our admissions and liaison people, our counselors, our IT staff, tutors, our medical and wellness staff, our partners with Chartwells, and our academic office staff, your vice principal, and all your many teachers. Each of these folks have at some point been on this journey with you. That is community. So, your CIC classes are now done, but the calculus here, your character, plus your talent and privilege, plus your belief in community, equals making the difference that the world needs right now. Class of 2021, congratulations. We are so very proud of you. Sarah Cambitez is an educator with broad leadership experience in the field of education planning, policy development, and program delivery. Currently, she is serving as the acting president and CEO of the United Nations Association in Canada, or UNA Canada. Sarah brings experience, passion, and many years of working with civil society on international development issues through education. Before joining UNA Canada, Sarah worked as a consultant with UNICEF in New York and the Rockefeller Foundation, coordinating the Alliance for Female Education in Africa. She has set up community learning programs in a number of African countries using formal and non-formal educational modules to promote empathy-based learning. Sarah has served on a number of boards, including Oxfam Canada, Canadian International Development Consultants, and Ottawa Community Housing. She holds a PhD in Administration and Policy Studies in Education from McGill University. Greetings, graduates in class of 2021. Thank you for inviting me to be your keynote speaker. I am truly honored. First, I take this moment to congratulate you for reaching this milestone. You have demonstrated hard work, grit, and resilience to get to this day of your graduation. Congratulations. You have earned this moment. Celebrate and enjoy it. Tomorrow, you will embark on your next learning and professional journey. Allow me to share some words of wisdom that I have earned through my own journey. A journey that started in my native land of Uganda and has led me to the place I am at today as the acting president and CEO of the United Nations Association in Canada. Three key words I want you to take away from my speech. Resilience, empathy, and allyship. 
as graduates, you have already demonstrated resilience. Hold on to that concept. Don't lose grip of it. It will serve you and see you through many bumps and enable you to open many locked doors and pave pathways to your aspired future selves. Use the high school diploma you are about to receive as a key to open many, as many doors as possible to seize many opportunities pre presented to you. This brings me to another word of wisdom, empathy. Be a respective, active listener when dealing with those who might come across your path. Active listening shows empathy and it happens on three levels. When someone shares their story, listen for facts, listen for feelings and listen for purpose. This will enable you to understand the real reason behind the story. So you can then make judgment or take appropriate action. Active listening puts the other person at the center of the story and you at the background as a listener. That is empathy. Finally, the word allyship should be part of your lexicon. Celebrate the allies that have supported you on your journey to this point. Your parents, guardians, teachers, friends, and neighbors. Those are all your allies. You see, allies are like a village. You may recall that expression. I think it's an African expression that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, my dear graduates, now it is your turn to be an ally to someone else. Pay it forward. Lift others along the way to your aspired future self. And be inclusive of the diversity that surround you. Let your purpose as an ally be to lift and leave no one behind. That way, your journey from this day forward will be shared and celebrated not only by you and your family members, but by many you bring along with you on your journey. Dear graduates, it is no secret you are inheriting many challenges facing our shared globe. Don't despair. Unlike many generations before you, generations of your parents, the generation of your grand, great grandparents, and many, many more before them, you possess many tools at your fingertips to allow you to bring about positive change. Remember, you are the social media generation. What you need is to apply disciplined research to continue elevating your awareness on emerging issues of your time. Keep showing concern empathy to energize you to take informed action to the future you want and deserve. Just don't leave anyone behind. As you know, the UN Development Agenda handed all of us 17 Sustainable Development Goals. We also refer to them as the Global Goals and we, they have to be achieved by 2030. This agenda is yours to activate, and we look to you with much hope that you get us there through your resilience, empathy, and allyship. Congratulations once again, and I wish you all the best of all the best on your next journey. Thank you once again for having me, and good luck. Magande Ashbel Unwedo arrived to Columbia International College 
in August of 2018, determined to make an impact on her new school. Reflecting on her time here, I think it's safe to say that she accomplished that. Ashbell has been involved in almost every aspect of the school, including being an orientation leader, being a member of the diversity team, the residence leadership team, the character education prefect team, the student council, and the Model United Nations team. Two of her proudest accomplishments are being the general manager of the Spring Festival, as well as being the director of the Crisis Committee for the Model United Nations Global Summit. It comes as no surprise that Ashbell has been voted by her peers to be this year's valedictorian. Thank you, Ms. Cathy, for the lovely introduction. Greetings to all. My name is Mengande Ashbel Huero, and it is my utmost pleasure and honor to have been chosen by my peers to represent them after this unprecedented year of hard work. Years from now, when we look back on this year, we will certainly remember all the challenges we faced, but we should also be proud of all the great things we accomplished. There are so many individuals that I would love to thank in this speech, but it's not part of my job description, so I will leave it to our amazing vote of thanks, Rebecca. But I am extremely grateful for every single individual that has helped me to get here. I remember 2018 when I came to CIC from Benin, a small country in West Africa. It was a new, scary, yet very exciting experience. I took some time to adjust to this new community, but I was blessed to have the CIC Total Care family guide and support me. This made it easier for me to make some new friends and quickly get involved in the school community. Throughout the years, never could I have imagined that our graduation would be online, yet here we are. I'd like to think that I'm speaking for all my fellow graduates when I say this ride was worth it. Despite all the hurdles, we made it. Between August and May, I switched from online learning to in-person learning many times. I pictured things to go a certain way, but the world had different plans for me. I'm certain that I'm not the only one whose plans were altered due to the realities of the world that we are currently living in. My point is that time to time again, our resilience, our strength, and our ability to adapt was tested by the world. And one thing is for certain, this will happen countless times during our lifetime. Circumstances will disappoint you. People will defy you. Life will deceive you. And it's up to you to decide if you let it break you or if you will break through it. And it is perfectly okay to have moments of weakness. I know I have, and I regret not reaching out for help earlier. Talk to your friends, talk to your parents, see a counselor, just do whatever it takes to get that strength that you have in your back and to keep moving forward, no matter what your pace is. It is important that you surround yourself with good friends. There is a quote that I've always found fascinating, and I recently learned that it was spoken by Vladimir Lenin, and it says, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. So surround yourself with people that inspire you, people that will make you want to do more, people that will lift you up. And if you can't find one of those people, be one of those people. Because to really make it in life and to accomplish anything that is really worth accomplishing, you will need the help and support of others. And you will only be able to grow if you're willing to help others grow. When I found out that I was elected to be valedictorian, I quickly remembered my fifth grade graduation. I remember watching the valedictorian there give his speech and how watching him inspired me. And since that day, my goal and dream was to one day be on the stage and give a speech too. Fast forward, now I'm here. For the longest time, I used to bring myself down by thinking, no, I can't, I'm not that smart. And I'm not popular, so I wouldn't get the votes anyways. But one thing is for sure. I know I tried my best nonetheless. I looked at what others before me have done and tried to get inspired by it. 
Could I have done more? Certainly. But am I still proud of everything I did? Most definitely. All this to say what? Here are the main points that I'm trying to get across to you. One, dreams come true, dear graduates. But if and only if you are committed enough to work for them. As the saying goes, dreams don't work unless you do. If you want something, be sincere enough with yourself to put in the work. Observe what others before you have done and seek for advice. Be the absolute best. This world is a very competitive place and only fighters make it to the top. But at the end of the day, the most significant competition is the one we have with ourselves. We can always learn more, do more, be more. Why meet the standards when we can exceed them? We should always strive for excellence, dare to push your limits and don't underestimate yourself. We all have great potential and we can and will accomplish remarkable things. And two, treat people with kindness. No matter the title you may hold in this life and no matter how independent you may be, you really can't accomplish anything all by yourself. So pay it forward whenever you can. It will come back to you in the most unexpected ways. And as Maya Angelou famously puts it, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So raise people around you up, and by doing so, you also raise yourself up. But more importantly than that, be kind to yourself and take care of yourself. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you all the best of luck on whatever journey you begin next. Thank you, and have a nice life ahead. I am excited to introduce this year's vote of thanks speaker, Bei Hao Cho, Rebecca. 99.83%. You heard that correctly. 99.83%. That is Rebecca's for you average. What an incredible academic accomplishment. However, when staff and her peers think of Rebecca, they don't just think about her academic performance. They think of the impact she has made on the student body. Rebecca has been a fantastic peer tutor as well as a valuable member of the Student Council and Model United Nations team. I'm very proud to introduce Rebecca Jo. Dear Honorable Founder and Executive Director, respected principals, all teachers and staff members involved in our total care teams, and most importantly, our lovely graduating students at Columbia International College. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity to present the graduate vote of thanks on behalf of the class of 2021 on a special day, which is really a great honor for me. And thanks Mrs. Ray, Mr. Brandon, and Ms. Irene for helping me prepare for this incredible moment. During this particular time in which COVID-19 has spread worldwide, all of the staff members and teachers at CIC have faced many challenges and obstacles that they have had to overcome. However, we succeeded in going through all of the difficulties through our collective efforts. Most importantly, I'd like to express my gratitude to Mr. Chen, Ms. Joni Ken, Mr. Irisaid, and Mrs. Reid, who are the driving force of our CIC community. Every decision that you've made entirely protects the safety of all students here during COVID-19. All of your contributions and perfect planning have made sure that all the students here around the world have the opportunity to study remotely, go to their ideal university, and continue pursuing their dreams. Thank you so much for your efforts. Moreover, I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to our admissions and liaison office, study permit and visa office, the external testing office, as well as the IT department. As we all know, this year, various policies and regulations are updated, which impose much stress on these departments. 
However, you always kept your eyes on the latest information and help students deal with the unexpected. I sincerely appreciate problem solving ability and efforts to make sure that all of the problems of students are resolved as soon as possible during the pandemic, which reduced the stress of students significantly. Thank you for your tiny support to us. In addition, I want to say thanks to our resident staff, Chartwell's team, security, maintenance team, as well as medical clinic and wellness counseling. During this particular year, your workload has increased tremendously. To ensure that all students can enjoy their life at CIC safely while studying, all of you have had to work much harder than before. However, you are always scrupulously in your position every day, and all of your efforts succeed in making our campus a safe shelter under the spread of COVID-19. We class of 2021 will always remember your remarkable commitment to the CIC community and your support to us. I also would like to appreciate commitment from all of our CIC teachers throughout the process of shifting from physical class and virtual teaching. The whole academic team has experienced such incredible changes in their work. However, all of you have managed to overcome these challenges and bring students to get used to the new teaching mode. I still can remember how Ms. Kowalski, my English teacher, inspired us daily and imparted knowledge of Canadian social issues. I also remember how Mr. Shaw, my calculus and data management teacher, expanded knowledge in class to help us have a deeper insight into the mathematics world. All of us can never have such great academic achievements without you. Furthermore, I sincerely appreciate contributions from Tutoring Center, Student Leadership De Development, Guidance, and University Placement Office. Despite obstacles caused by the pandemic, you try your best to provide us with the opportunities and resistance as much as possible, which encourage us to continue our studies engage in various activities, and keep pursuing our dreams. On the path of getting into our ideal universities, you have made great efforts and commitments. Personally, as I always contacted Tutoring Center for academic support, I have to say thanks to Ms. Zoe and Ms. Erin, who are really supportive to all of our students. I still can remember the days that you helped me review my essays and presentations again and again, and return useful feedback. Besides, I have to say thanks to Miss Kathy, Mr. Brandon, Mr. Tony, and Mr. Chris, who taught me a lot and helped me further develop my leadership skills when participating in Student Council and Model United Nations. Thanks for all of your commitments to the CIC community. You are the guide and facilitator on our dream seeker journey full of stars. Lastly, thanks to my peers and my family supporting me. When I came to CIC, I was so shy that I didn't have the courage to speak in front of the public. I didn't like to socialize with others. I always feel overwhelmed and anxious before each presentation and often stayed alone. However, my friends always took me to meet new friends and encouraged me to be more confident. So here I am today. Especially during this difficult year, it's you who prevent me from isolation. Also, I want to say thanks to my parents. Your guidance, care, and support throughout my life helped me become a better person. I'm proud of myself because of you. All of your company and inspiration shaped me into what I am today. Things may not always go as planned, but I'm sure we can all agree that all staff members and teachers here have done their best to support CIC students. The fact that we have made it here to receive our diplomas comes from your perseverance and commitments. Thank you for accompanying us throughout one of the most important years in our lifetimes together. Your power and intelligence make a massive footprint 
on our high school journey, which also teaches us about our destinations. I can promise to our future students and staff that we are all in this together. All of our lovely staff and teachers will keep contributing to building up our CIC community. Thank you so much. The Endowment Fund is a charitable organization that is run by an independent board of directors who are unpaid volunteers. They believe in the power and potential of youth to make a difference in the world, and the students at Columbia International College are no exception. Since 2009, we are proud to have given out over half a million dollars to almost 600 CIC students, and additional $50,000 to local community organizations where students contributed their times as volunteers. We are grateful to our generous individual and corporate donors, alumni and parents of Columbia International College for giving to this fund. Please join in supporting our students and make an online donation of any amount to www.csef.ca. Thank you and congratulations to all of our graduates on behalf of the Endowment Fund. Graduates, now you will hear from our founder, Mr. Clement Chan. Mr. Chan came to Canada as an international student many years ago and saw the challenges and difficulties that international students encountered. From that experience, he created what is now Columbia International College, and it is his passion. Good morning, parents and guests. Principal Einstein, Vice Principal Reed, 
faculty members, staff, and graduates. We're in this together. It's only a half truth. Time flies. It has been 15 months since our first lockdown last March. This is our second May graduation ceremony under the pandemic. We spent the last year together getting used to stay at home orders, masks plus facial shields on our faces, getting used to the constantly switching between online and in-person classes. Whatever the authority recommended or legislated as new safety protocols, we all followed and did it together as law-abiding citizens for the greater good of all. Well, not exactly 100%. The motto and slogan of the day has become, we are in this together. Meaning, be patient, be respectful, be hopeful. The pandemic will end one day and all of us will return to some type of normalcy. We often hear from politicians and leaders, we are in this together. For myself, every time I heard that, on the contrary, I frequently asked the question, really? A year ago, the head of the World Health Organization stressed that a global approach would be the only way out of the crisis. In quotation, the way forward is solidarity. Solidarity at the national level and solidarity at the global level. Close quotation. Said the WHO Director General Gabriosis in April 2020. Solidarity at the global level. Said the WHO Director General Gabriosis in April 2020. Public health safety protocol are recommended by public health physicians and scientists. But the final measures are decided by politicians. This put politicians in many countries into tough positions. They have to make politically correct decisions. Why? To make sure they will be re-elected again in the next election. Sometimes, this could bias the politicians' approaches and decisions to the extent that their own citizens' safety or long-term well-being could be compromised. At times, this compromise may even extend to others in a global scale. Maybe I want to reword the statement to say, we are in this together when my political future is intact. We are in this together when the politician's political future is intact. On a national level, when things are not working out in the management of the COVID-19 situation, example, collapse of the medical health systems, not enough vaccine doses, politicians will quickly attempt to protect their own reputation they distract their own citizens and make excuses to blame the failure on other people or other nations. Internationally, among nations, where solidarity has been called for, national leaders have totally forgotten the global approach that is needed. When it was time to export vaccine doses, some countries or region immediately imposed restrictions. Politicians took politically correct postures with no regard for the safety of the citizens in the vaccine-receiving countries. On the global scale, the World Health Organization or the CDC are the global authority on health issues and infectious disease. These NGOs gave public health guidelines to the world with the expertise and authorities on the subject. They have done so for many decades. Yet, when the WHO conducts studies and led 
research teams to perform investigations. When the report were released, politicians around the world make comments or rebuttals to fit the political objectives and the career advancement with total disregard to truth. Those politicians have no interest in finding out the truth. They were more interested in making statements that would advance their position in their next election. Dear graduates, when you apply for universities, there were requirements for you to fulfill. OSSD must be completed. Average marks must meet a certain minimum. IELTS have to meet a certain minimum scores. Have you seen any admission requirement to become a politician? None. One just has to talk themselves into becoming a politician. This is the problem. No one said. Speaking the truth is a requirement to become politicians. Dear graduates, what I want to emphasize to you today is, where is the truth in everything surrounding the world we are living in now? It is a divided world with a lot of divisive dark forces. Wearing masks became a political issue and not a scientific issue. Self-interest, political expediency, discriminations, hypocrisy, double standards, and lies are filling our personal space and airwaves. To know the truth, we need listening skills, research skills, and critical thinking skills. I hope, graduates, the pedagogy used in the education system at CIC, the teaching and learning style used by CIC teachers, and the character education conducted by our Student Leadership Development Office have empowered you to seek the truth. The truth about COVID-19. The truth of all news around your community and the truth being disseminated about your ethnic groupings. Graduates, the fabric of our society has been shaken today because of the impact of social media applications and the recent attempt by politicians to polarize the society so that it become easier to retain their followers who will support them in the next elections. You, graduates, are more accustomed to social media apps than any other groups of users of older age. I'm appealing to you to acquire the skills and knowledge to seek the truth. Make it your mission to speak out about truth. Political correctness at times may just be a cover for hypocrisy and pretense. Always go for a reliable source to acquire news. Beware of what you read on the web. Fact check and fact check again. Defend truth with your strong character values, we try to impart on you during the time you spend at CIC. Make it your personal commitment to be a responsible global citizen in defending truth. Solidarity, global approach. Make it your conviction to make this a better world for all of us. Thank you. Graduates, thank you for joining us today. We are so proud of everything that you have accomplished during your time here at CIC, whether you studied in person or remotely. We wish you every success as you move on to the next stage in your journey. And thank you to everyone who played a part in putting this virtual ceremony together. Graduates and all members of our CIC family, 
A few weeks ago, we suffered a great loss. Your dear teacher and our dear colleague, Jim Lawless, passed away after a short battle with cancer. From 2003 to 2021, Jim Lawless provided the soundtrack to CIC. He was a beloved music teacher and friend who donated his passion and talent to his vocation. Besides teaching classes, he was a constant presence at graduations and award ceremonies, gifting us with many memorable performances. Jim often won the Above and Beyond Award, which was given for outstanding contribution to student life. But arguably, he could have won it every year. We are proud to honour his legacy through the Jim Lawless Memorial Scholarship. Nothing made Mr. Lawless prouder than seeing his students shine. He would be incredibly proud of this graduation's recipient. In 2010, Jim composed our school song in UIC CIC. We will now play for you one of Mr. Lawless's favorite versions of in UIC CIC, originally performed for our May 2020 graduation by his Avengers class. And Mr. Lawless, as your lyrics state, wherever I go, you will always be a big part of me. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is the new Avengers once again. Today is a really special day where some of us will be departing from their high school journeys. And yet, another wonderful journey awaits them. And we are here to say farewell. This is UIC CIC. Strangers, now we live as such good friends. I stand before all of you to say it's the beginning and not the end. It's with you I see, see I see one thousand faces on the back end. Always be my heart 